type pattern. A pheasant tail actually. I'm like, well, I'll show you the two the two patterns that I've actually fished and tried using a small jig. Now I normally I've never fished these before until the other day, and I was totally amazed at how well they worked. But it's a bit of fun. I mean, it's not every day that I go and fish a jig, but I tell you, you should have give them a go. It's amazing how the fish come to them and <laughs> and the many fish you catch. It's amazing. But anyway, this is the the companies that. Uh, I got the jack head from the worm and uh, basically you can buy it from this company here it's called www.tungstenhead.tungstenbeads.net now the reason I'm mentioning this is because I've never seen them this small before and this is a size 18 and you see the, the weight there is 2.3 grams and these are small orange head ones uh, they're certainly worth buying, they're a bit of fun now the two patterns are tied and here's one of them and this looks a bit crazy, but this is a, a fly used in it's America. It's called the cap spider. And this is an olive one, as you can see, it's very leggy and a bit crazy looking, but it's a very effective dressing pattern that works extremely well. And very simple, that's the other thing. Very simple dressing that works well. Now, to get closer to the patterns that I fish, personally, I've got a, there's the pheasant tail. With a wee marabou tail, just to give it a wee bit more of a, a kick and a bit of movement. And then, obviously, the jig head. And this is the one I'm going to tie. It's reasonably, it's very simple to tie. Now, the thread I'm going to be using, just a black thread. And then, just put down a layer, all the way along the shank. Now, these jigs, the barber is actually on the outside. Of the, not on the inside of the, the bend, but on the outside. But you can easily remove it if you don't want it, and I just bend it away. Now, the tail, I've got some, this is a, a brown, it's more of a kind of fiery brown marabou and I'm just going to simply take some from the feather break it apart blend, you're looking at length of the, the actual the jig hook itself catch it down and come in and take away the waste now you need a, a fine rib now I'm just going to use a fine copper rib a copper wire anyway, so obviously which suits the, the pheasant tail. Now I caught fish on this when it was just swinging round, casting it upstream, obviously flicking the tip of the rod, which I like to do anyway, and the takes were really aggressive. The fish come onto it hard, and, and uh, if, as I say, if you want to try it, it's certainly worth doing. Now we've got some pheasant tail fibre, natural and brown. I'm just pulling it into the fine tips and then work my way up. Leave about maybe two mil or so at the top. Now I'm going to bring the pheasant tail fibre the opposite way I actually wind the thread and then come across it, tying it down. Now the main reason I like to do that is when I bring up the rib, and the rib's a the main material in this point to protect the material, protect the pheasant tail, it has to catch in more of the fibre. And that's the best way to do it. It catches it comes across, come in the strongest way, which is away from myself, is because that's the way I actually tie. And your fly will last much longer if you do that. So cross your thread. Bend and break away the wire. There you go. Now the legs I'm using, these are centipede legs. And this is a small. Now I'm just going to put three either side. Just line them up. The basic way to do it is just to come round. Now you want these rubber legs to be on the top. Now I'm going to get around a couple of times to make sure they're well caught. Just hold the either ends and bring them round. Now if you if you stretch these legs, they slightly they will lose this, the the small black mark, but don't worry about it because if they keep working, now I'm just going to trim this away, just at a manageable length that I can come in and move them around. Now the easiest way is to hold one side and then come round, catch it. So basically, you want three either side, and then come to the other side. Again, once you get started, it's okay. Because they bounce all over the place. 
Now when you cut these, the length is up to yourself. I mean, have them all, all lengths if you want. Or have them all the same is what I did. And there we go. Now, I'm, what I'm going to do is slightly tidy up. Now, you, there's lots of dubbins on the market. And you've seen me recently using a lot of the... This is called the Diamond Bright. It's by Spirit River. And this is a, a chocolate brown. There you go, Diamond Bright chocolate brown. Now, this is a, an excellent colour. It's just... It works real well. Uh, you only need a wee drop. Just slightly double into your thread. And what I'm going to do is figure it through the legs. Just taking my time. Just watch what you're doing. The more movement you leave in the legs, the better. And these, if, if you come round, like I've caught this one here, just pull it out. And bring your dubbing to the back. And then you can, I'm going to tighten up. For some reason, these legs seem to want to catch everything you put on, so you just have to be patient. Even with myself. There you go. Take your time round. And tighten up with the dubbing again. And we end up finishing at the front. And have a look at the legs. Look fine to me. You can now, what I usually do is lift them all up together on the top. Don't stretch them. And then I get, as I said, cut them whatever length. I mean, you could keep them the length they are if you want. But I'm just going to shorten them slightly. Take about four or five mil off. Now, to tie off, all I'm going to do is put some super glue onto the thread, wind it two or three turns. And then what finish you onto those turns and there we are. And you'll find that strong and ready. Now there you are, that's your pheasant tail small jig. As I say, a great fun to, to fish. I mean once that it actually sits upside, it sits like this in the water. So and then you can move it. I actually put it in the dropper at first and put a normal fly in the point. And they came after this. So I put two on, I put this other, I put the spider on, the cap spider on, and pff, I was catching fish out with that, and I was catching grayling as well. And the grayling tain this one more. The brownies had a go at this. Uh, didn't get the monster grayl uh, brown trout, but I got the brown trout came to that for a... And it was in a deep hole, and that, that I would say the cap spider caught more than this one. But anyway, if you're going to give them a go, do it. It's good fun. That's what fly tying is all about. Anyway, you can bring out some of the dubbing as well, just by using your Velcro. And here you go. And that's your small jig head pheasant tail. If you're into a bit of fun and fishing, then give it a go. And I'm sure you'll catch fish on it.